Well, I've been digging into this one and it's an older Epiphone. I think it'll clean up nicely. It's got a few little chunks missing of it. Uh, having a little bit of difficulty with the serial number, but we'll get to that in a second. As you can see, it's been not overly played and it's still in good condition. The frets are excellent as usual. It's a Gibson Epiphone. And if you look at the serial number there, you'll see it was made in Japan, which is a good one. The serial number I've put it into several places and it comes up with different uh, ideas. But I'm getting the, the, the feel that it was made in 1985 in Japan and it is a Gibson manufactured one. But it's in very good condition and I'm sure it'll sound lovely. I'm going to get down to that. It has one problem which needs to be addressed and that is that. Now what I'm hoping is that those little pieces of wood, I'll push them through and maybe be able to shape them. But I'm very doubtful that it will be exactly what I want. But there's an other little bits and pieces and scratches and what's that there? Some sort of glue or something. I quite like this guitar again. Well, is there a guitar I haven't liked? Except for those ones that are, what do you call it? With the rocking head tuners and stuff like that. I like the guitars. I don't like the style. But the, the, it's all in pretty good shape. Uh, for a 1985 guitar and I'm quickly doing my uh, that's 40 35 years plus the neck has some issues which uh, that needs to be addressed because that's sharp and that is not really a big issue there is a little lump there but if it affects the playing it has to be adjusted there's a couple of little things maybe just some fine sandpaper will bring that down we don't want to overplay it. I think these will clean up all right. Okay. They're all a little bit loose. But I imagine they're the original. Well, I know they're the originals. So that's the whole. Have I turned it around? Oh, yeah, there's nothing in that side. A couple of little dinges. What you hear rattling inside are the, the new bridge pins and the saddle. So I'm going to get stuck into this. I think the very first thing I'm going to do pity about that being worn away the epiphone hmm. wonder if you can get that replaced but anyway uh the first thing i'm going to do is get stuck into this all right hmm even with my jumper off i can't get my arm in to the back there so i'm going to have to get them to fall down to the floor and then drag them out uh so how the problem is then how do I get them back up again but we'll worry about that next because we can use strings and stuff like that but that's you but this this repair as much as I'd like it to be beautiful is not going to be beautiful right, I'm just pulling out the stuff from the inside of the guitar in the hope that no there's no wood there's no wood right okay so i pushed the wood down but it hasn't come out the bottom so i'm going to have to use something to loosen it i'm putting something in the inside there to this little magnetic thing see a little magnetic thing there and hopefully that will push make them fall to the ground by working it One has fallen, and because it's a rounded magnetic edge, it won't scratch them. So I think they've both fallen. So I'm going to shake it out now. I hope. There's one, and there's the other. Yeah, one and the other. Now what have I got? Not a lot there, is there? There's not a lot there. That has been cracked, as you can see. And that... I 
think about that. If I can, if I can put a little piece of wood underneath it to cover that hole and then fill it up and then put those little slivers on top. Still don't think it's going to be great. But let me just put these away so that I don't lose them. I haven't seen a job on something as obvious as that that's what I would call brilliant, no matter who's doing it, because it's an obvious place in the guitar. Those are in the tub now for later on. So what I'm going to do now is just use a little bit of polish to see what I can do to get this up. Come on back into the camera shot, that's it. To get the uh, cross of Saint Marie away. Because it's got scores there, it's got scores there, it's got scores there, deep scores that you can't get rid of, you can't see that, yeah, deep scores, it's got chunks out of it there, so it's going to have something, so I got a feeling, and that there of course, and some wee dents around the edges, so I got a feeling we're going to be more like repairing this than being excellent at getting it a thousand percent. Let me do some preparations, okay? Come back to you. So we're going to try now. This is maple. Maple with the grain the wrong way. I'm going to use this bit of maple because the grain is running in the sort of same direction. But I don't think it's going to be a big difference. EUW. It's going to be EU. But it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be invisible, that's for sure. So I'm going to order these cotton buds. So my intentions now are to glue that little piece of wood underneath. I don't know how rough it's going to be underneath there. Hmm, I should have thought of that, shouldn't I? Because I don't know how rough it's going to be. It may not glue firmly to it. There might be flat. Well, I won't know until I try it. So I'm going to use a bit of gardening wire and put it through there to the other end and then connect the gardening wire to the the hole and to see what happens when I when I pull it back through again let me just twist this around a couple of times to see and we'll, we'll soon find out oh, well that's good enough that's good enough <laughs> Next time I'm gonna I'm gonna slather. I'm actually not gonna take it out. I'm gonna gonna slather some slather some glue onto that. What am I waiting for? Right. What am I waiting for? Right. Christmas. Let's just get it done. <laughs> Yeah, that's putting a good tension on it. So we'll let that glue itself and solidify itself. I can see little bits of gaps and when it's gone solid, I'm going to put a little bit more glue in around the edges. So we'll let that sit for a few hours. So these things, I think I've already said, bug me. There are several, several fixes. This guitar, uh, 
was worth about 150 quid if it didn't have that and if it didn't have all that sort of little chips and stuff like that to the neck. The neck's not that important, excuse the rattling and ban, but this chip will knock 50 quid off it so it's worth about 100 quid I would say. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, where is it? This is the one with the finest grain on it. You can see it sort of matches a little bit of the thing. So I'm going to create, I'm going to make that a perfect square like that. But yeah, I can't find one there that's matching. But there are a couple there that are probably matching okay. Something like that. They're matching. Matching like that there. And then that sort of hides it. So I don't know. The owner will make a decision and I'll come back to you. What would you do? I'm going to put up this short clip. But what would you do? Okay. As you can see, I have gone with the aspect of putting in some bling. And what I've done is I've brought out the old power drill because I need speed to make sure it doesn't rip apart all the uh, wood. And even then I'm still nervous. Now some time ago I bought a set of these. They're, they're whatchamacallit, it's Vorsprung Durch Technique type things. And they cost me a pretty penny. But what they do is they drill holes. There's a special name for them. Uh, I'll look it up and put it down below. But they can drill f holes quite nicely. And they're very sharp because they're seldom used. So what I've done is I've brought in the, the arm to do the job. I have to get this as parallel as I can to the arm. And then I'm going to set that down like that there. Press down as hard as I can and then bring this down on it and just get it positioned where I think it should be. So what have I got? It's flush, it's mounted. I'm going to accept that. Let me look what a two pence piece fits. Two pence piece is just a bit tight, but I'm going to use the bronze and that will do fine. And by the time I finish dot, tarting this all up, it'll be great. Right, now what I have to do is get the exact measurements for that for over here. I should have, I don't have a, I don't have a spirit level, that would have helped a lot, but I don't have a spirit level. Do I have a spirit level anyway? Okay, so that one just went easily. Nothing to see there, really, it fits in perfectly. Uh, this one, because the wood was crushed, a little bit more difficult, but what I'll use is just fillers. It's the perfect level. I'll just put fillers in there to fill it up and make it smooth. Well, that's black nail polish right and it's gel nail polish and I found a little bonus because I just put it in there in the hole to cover it but the little bonus is that that won't dry which is a good thing because then I can go over it and take the edges off and things like that there and I can spend as much time as I like working on the edges etc to make sure it's right and then it will only dry when I use this machine. This little here, a black light, a little black light torch. And it seems to dry fairly quickly within a minute. Let me just do it.
Look at that there. That is amazing. Look. I just give it a bit more, but it's already hard. It's it still feels slightly tacky, but it's not coming off. So what I'll do is. So I've changed my mind again. I'm going to use those. This copper ones, and I think I prefer them. So I'm going to set them in. <laughs> I was tempted to put the nail polish on it and then wipe it off and then I suppose I don't know that until I try it yet but what do I do over here do I use super glue I think I probably use super glue on that tacky but not wet right I'm gonna put some super glue on this to stick that down but I got a feeling it's only going to be slight the super glue is only going to be a, a temporary thing because the actual nail varnish will hold it down I'm pretty sure it will whether it looks good or not is another thing but I don't care because the owner said I could do I could play with what I wanted to play so I'm playing and I, it's at his, his it's at his expense <laughs> But it's it's a hundred dollar it's a hundred pound guitar so it's not like it's the end of the world, right? Okay, so oh. stuff catches your breath. Right, so that's just to hold it in until it gets hard. You would be tempted. That's already solid. So I'm going to I'm going to do this one with the, with the with this. Hopefully I won't make a mess while the glue while the super glue is drying. But hopefully I won't make a mess. But let's just see what happens when I go over the whole thing, over the edge and everything. I'm going over the edge. Uh, my life story going over the edge. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Let's hope it's really bonded to it because I'm going to press a little bit firmly on it. Now what that should have done is should have put some then in and around it. Now have to make sure it's really clean off the guitar because once it's bonded it ain't going anywhere. That's another aspect. Right, okay. Yard varnish. I'm going to pause the button and go get yard for yard. Right, now why yard varnish? And um, there's a pretty good reason for that. It gives me more time to work at it. Much more time to work at it. So if I fill it in there, and if I spill it over the sides, then I can then I can work at it much easier. See the way I'm doing it now? Bring it up over the sides. It also hides the fact that I cut the wood with a slight orbital link on it. So 
now I'm hoping that all I have to do is just, I've got lots of time for this to dry and I don't want, I also don't want the copper to be shiny because I'm an artist. Oh. Something over it just to see how it cleans, but it looks pretty good. I like it. I think I like it. I think I like it. I think I like it. Okay. Back whenever it's dried out. Right, we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning just clean up the neck and clean up this this very dirty. I'm not going to video that. I'll come back to you when it's all nice and clean. Well, this little problem here, there's a chunk out of that. And it's not awful, but it's it's a chunk. It's a good little chunk out of it. But it's also got... These are little chunks as well. They're not paint, the little chunks. And there's some scratching there. Somebody maybe had a watch on or something. The stuff inside the guitar is what you're hearing from the, the, the bits and pieces. The strings and stuff are all still stored. What I'm going to do for the whole neck is I'm going to sand that down. I'm going to sand it down to natural. Not natural wood, you won't get it down to natural wood, but I'm going to sand it down to make it smooth again. But if I'm going to do that, I might as well try to fill that up a bit with super glue. Just to take that little roughness off. And guess what? That's exactly what I'm going to do now. I should be using my special adapter. Yes, I think I'm going to have to use my special adapter, so pause. My special adapter is a chunk of wood with two, another piece of wood with two hinges on it, hinge there and hinge there. And it means I can angle the guitar for the neck the way I want it. Now that won't fall any further now and I can get there the way I want it, okay? Right, I'm hoping I won't have to spill anything, but you just never know when you're putting these things on if you spill them or not. So I'm going to try to drip it on. All right, so we'll come back when it's dry. Right, next day that seems to be solid, so I'm going to do some scraping. It's awkward because it's on a round part, but even if I just get the basics off, it's better than what it was. Dent there. No, it feels smooth as anything. It doesn't look good yet. I'm going to try it with some smoother sandpaper. This is you're coming up to 2000 grit, and I may actually put just a hint of that. Although that's bringing up that's bringing it up. That's bringing up it generally looking nicer. Bringing up a bit of a polish with the 2000 grit. I'm gonna try some bluff on the, those little dots. try some bluff in there. There's, you see this? If I wet it, let me just use a wet wipe. If I wet, wet it, it vanishes 
well to a degree but the white doesn't beneath it because that's part of the scratch that was on it it's got a lot of little dents on the neck but the neck feels good now yeah it all feels good I'm going to try to hide that now those little dots or cover them up a bit right where's my bluffing tools here they are here let me just use my bluffing tools on this it's only cosmetic it's not a big deal not a big deal at all. That's a little bit better hidden and the neck feels good. I don't think I can do anything to hide that because it's though that damage is underneath the... I just do that anyway and take it off again. I don't think it'll do anything to hide it. A tiny touch but not much. Yeah, it's a tiny touch. It it feels good. The noise is the uh, you can see it's shiny because the super glue made it shiny. But feels good. Maybe just give it another little. If I give it another little polish, it'll fill in those holes with white stuff again. Let me just do a little bit of bluff there too. How many of you do bluffs on your guitars? I'm sure you all do if you've got little scratches. You're not going to respray a guitar completely. Oh, I need to get those things out of this. It's annoying me every time. Right, I'm going to clean the head up a bit now. I have to keep remembering that this is a not a guitar that needs to have me spending the rest of my life on it. The these are loose, but there's no screws on them, so. I, I I I know what type of uh, tune, pegs they are, tuner pegs they are, and they're not going to be much good me taking them apart because they're loose, but they're not loose. Whenever you go to uh, tune it, they'll tighten up and they'll do the job that they need to do when you go to tune it. This is a nice guitar. I bet you it's going to sound really nice. It's been played well over the years. I need to do the frets. But that's it, cleaner and the freezer cleaner. And my bluffing tool, where's my bluffing tool? I'm not going to go crazy on this, I'm just going to bluff it again. I used to work for a furniture store company, I used to deliver furniture for them. That was a tough job. And all the furniture stores had these things, they're, they're uh, furniture touch up markers. And every bit of furniture had a bit of touch-up on it. And I used to deliver this stuff. And there wouldn't be anything obvious, but nobody would ever mention anything because as far as they're concerned, the thing was brand new coming out. But trying to get a huge wardrobe the whole way from England where they were shipped to Northern Ireland without a tiniest scratch on it, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Right, there's just a little bit of bluff here. I got it bluffed, but it's the best you probably could do without having to respray the guitar. Right, pause now, get all that junk out of the inside of it and get the strings on. Oh no, 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 I need to do the neck. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 that's a song, isn't it? That's just, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Right, okay, that's it in tune. Pause while I get ready for it. Okay, this is going to be sped up because you've seen this a million times and I'm going to check the frets and I'm going to level the frets if there are any frets that need to be leveled and you've all seen that a million times and I, I don't think I'm going to do any big work on the frets, just going to polish them and check to see if there's anything that needs to be brought down. The frets are not badly worn.
all us children right okay I'm gonna go on and polish the body I'm not gonna let you see that because you don't need to see it because it's boring all right bye I'm knackered I usually get my apprentice to do this that's all nicotine as I say I usually get my apprentice to do this but he's taken the decade off if I only knew his name I've only got to there, and I've done the front. Oh, we get into focus, the front's but But you see, getting the sides done, it must have been, the guy might have been even playing in pubs and bars and smoking over the top of this. But that is rotten, stinking, rotten, stinking. I tell you. Like, this is a perfect one to use my electric polishing machine on. Problem is the Georgia girl doesn't like the sound of it, and I don't want to go outside to do it because it's bitter cold. It, it's as it would freeze the tits of a witch. Out there. Well, I figure if I have to suffer, you're going to suffer too. So I'm just finishing off the back now. Actually, I'm going to stop. I'm exhausted. I'm going to put the machine on. Right. Be ready for noise because I have the machine. First time I did this, I put too much polish on and the polish went everywhere. But the machine's coming on now and I'm putting a thin layer of polish on so it doesn't splash too far. <laughs> because it's got the E on still. So, right, okay, strings. All right, I'm gonna bring this up to tune. Had a little bit of trouble getting the bridge just right because the neck has sunk down over the years and I had to bring a bridge right down to where it probably should be, but I would like a little bit more play. Eventually, some years gonna to have to have a, a neck reset. Right, that's it roughly in tune. It'll need to stretch, but I need to do the neck again. I'm not happy with the neck, so I'm going to do more with the neck. I'll turn it around and let you see what I'm going to do. Take two. This is the neck after I've worked on it. I relicked it a bit, took off the varnish to make it look a little bit better than it was. Now I say take two because I had shown you the whole process of what I was doing and how I did it, but the camera decided it didn't like the SD card. 
So that's what I've done. It feels much better. It looks better than what it used to. I think maybe I might even have a clip of what it used to look like and I'll show it somewhere here. Right, okay. And then I'll, I'll now play take two of it, the demo of it. Oh, what's that there? It's a little bit of dust. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. Yes, this is the Epiphone that I've been working on. As you can see, it looks a lot better than it did when it came in. Uh, got the two little thingies at the bottom. The body has got all sorts of little scratches on it, but the two little thingies in the bottom look like wagon wheels of a country guitar. Can't do anything with that because it's a score that's deep inside. But it was a very, very hard guitar to get clean. I don't even think it's clean yet. I can see some areas there that still need polished, but it's, I probably will give it another polish. That should be really shiny. Probably give it another polish before it goes out. But that's it ready to give you a demo of. Now cut to the demo. Don't I sound really professional when I said cut to the demo? This is the Epiphone. It sounds nice. Sounds lovely. I think it sounds like a nice guitar. That nice jumbo sound to it, a nice clean sound too, and I've got a good action on it now, so it's good action the whole way up. Who my nails? My nails are too long. All right. Okay. My favorite chord. lovely. God, I still need, think it needs another polish before it goes, but it will get another polish before it goes. Say goodbye to it. Bye-bye.